Let's see how to multiply a vector by a scalar. In other words, how to multiply a vector by a real number. I'll start by getting the formula out of the way. Let's say we have a vector u whose components are x and y. Then if we multiply this vector by some number, which I'll call k, in other words, if we consider k times u, then that's equal to another vector whose components are k times x and k times y. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that result. Do make a note of it. What we notice here is that all of the components of u get multiplied by the number k. And in fact, I really should write on the side here that k can be any real number. There we go. All right, now in a couple of minutes, I'll use the grid on the right-hand side here, and I'll work through an example with numbers in which I'll illustrate this formula. But what I really want to focus on right now is how multiplying a vector by a number, like k, affects it graphically. So for that, I've got this blue vector u here, and let's see what happens to it if we were to multiply it by, say, 2. In other words, what would the vector 2u look like? Well, the vector 2u, or 2 times u, is a new vector which runs parallel to the vector u and is 2 times longer. Furthermore, since 2 is a positive number, it will point in the same direction as u. So if I try and draw that, vector 2u would look something like this. There we go. That's the vector which is parallel to u, is 2 times longer, and points in the same direction. And what this first example shows us is that when we multiply a vector by a number, it stretches the vector. In this case, it stretched it by a scale factor of 2. Another example could be the vector negative 3u, or negative 3 times u. Well, once more, negative 3u will be a vector which is parallel to the blue vector u, but in this case, it will be 3 times longer. Another important thing to say is that because we're multiplying u by a negative number, the result will point in the opposite direction. So here's what that would look like. It would be a vector which is parallel to u, so something roughly like this, and it would be three times longer, so I'll say that long, and it points in the opposite direction of u, so down there. Again, we see that the effect of multiplying the vector u by a number is to stretch that vector u, and in this case, by a scale factor of 3. The fact that we're multiplying by negative 3 makes it point in the opposite direction of u. Let's look at one last example and consider 0.5u. Well, just as previously, 0.5u will be a vector which is parallel to u, but in this case, it will be half of its length. And since 0.5 is positive, 0.5u will point in the same direction as u. So it would look something like this. There we go. That's the vector parallel to vector u, pointing in the same direction and half its length. Okay, so we now have a good idea of what multiplying a vector by a number does to it graphically. And in fact, the examples we just worked through highlighted an important formula. And that's to do with the magnitude of k times u. Remember, the magnitude of a vector is equal to its length. And in the examples we just saw here, we saw that when we multiply u by 2, the vector was 2 times longer. When we multiplied it by negative 3, the vector was 3 times longer. And last but not least, when we multiplied it by 0 0.5, the vector was half as long. And that leads to the following formula. The magnitude of k times the vector u is equal to the absolute value of k times the magnitude of the vector u. And again, I'll go ahead and box that result. Do make a note of it. Notice that the k that we have here is inside an absolute value. And that's to make sure that if we multiply a vector by a negative number, like the negative 3 we have here, this formula will still return something positive, since the absolute value of something negative becomes positive. That being said, let's work through an example. So I'll just write example here. And let's say we're given the vector a, whose components are 3 and 4. And to begin with, let me start by drawing this vector a. So starting from anywhere on this grid here, and I'll start at this point right here that I've added in yellow. To draw vector a, I move from this point three units to the right and four units upwards. So starting from here, I move one, two, three units to the right and one, two, three, four units upwards. So that would be this vector I'm drawing right now. There we go. That's vector a. 
And now let's say I multiply this vector a by negative 2. In other words, let's look into the vector negative 2 a. Well, according to the formula that I boxed here, its components should be negative 2 times 3 and negative 2 times 4. In other words, negative 2a has components negative 6 and negative 8. Now, if I draw this vector, negative 2a, then starting from anywhere on the grid, like from this point right here, I would move 6 units to the left, since it's negative 6, followed by 8 units downwards. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units to the left, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units downwards. And so that would be the vector I'm drawing right now. There we go. That's the vector, negative 2, A. And now, although I haven't drawn these vectors with a ruler, I'm sure you can appreciate the fact that these two vectors are indeed parallel. The green vector is two times longer than the blue one, and this green vector is pointing in the opposite direction as A is which confirms everything we had said previously. And to finish, we could use the components of the two vectors we have here to show that this second formula works perfectly as well. So let's see, if I start by calculating the magnitude of the vector negative 2a, remember its components were negative 6 and negative 8, so its magnitude, magnitude would be equal to the square root of negative 6 squared plus negative 8 squared, all that under the square root of course, and that's equal to the square root of negative 6 squared, which is 36, plus negative 8 squared, which is 64, and the square root right there. And since 36 plus 64 is 100, this equals to the square root of 100. In other words, the magnitude of negative 2a is equal to 10. Okay, now let's calculate the magnitude of vector a. And I'll try and fit that here, so vector a has magnitude equal to the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. So that's 3 squared, which is 9, plus 4 squared, which is 16. And that's equal to the square root of 25. In other words, the magnitude of vector a is equal to 5. And so what this formula is telling us is that the magnitude of negative 2a is equal to the absolute value of negative 2 times the magnitude of vector a. And as we've just seen, the magnitude of negative 2a is equal to 10, and the magnitude of a, well, that's equal to 5. So that's 5 here. And since the absolute value of negative 2 is just 2, we quickly see that this formula works. Indeed, 10 equals to 2 times 5. And there we have it. Those are the key things we need to know about multiplying a vector by a scalar.